Hello everybody and welcome to Like I Am 5 where I teach you to code in the simplest way possible. Today we're going to learn some of the shortcuts that I use most when I'm coding. And as a self-taught developer, I, when I first started out, I was pretty slow. I was, there was a lot of dragging and dropping, a lot of clicking, copying and pasting. It was just really inefficient. And now that I've learned a lot of these shortcuts that I'm going to teach you today, I've become a much better and more efficient and stronger developer. And I'm hoping that you can take some of these skills to apply to your own code. And so together, we're going to walk through a quick exercise that'll help teach the 10 shortcuts that I use the most. We're going to first start out by learning a couple of pretty basic ones while we're here in this main.py file inside of the replit that I shared below this video. Um, we'll start there and then we're going to use the bulk of our time together talking about this to do list that I created in this shortcuts.txt file. Um, it may seem like a silly contrived example just because I'm using a shortcuts uh, or a txt file to explain these shortcuts, but I promise you I'm going to explain how this applies to code, how you can find this more useful, and I'm hoping that through this exercise you're going to hopefully, hopefully find this helpful as you go out into your own coding journey. Um, so let me just go back here and we will get started together. One thing I will call out is that if you're using a map, great. I am too. I'm going to be walking through all of the shortcuts in the same way that I would use them myself. If you have a PC, don't worry at all. The only thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to take every single time that I say command, which I'll call out as well, and replace it with control. So if I say that command enter is the uh, command to run your code, which we're going to see in a second, on a PC, it's going to be control enter. The only other change you're going to need to make is that whenever you see option on a Mac, you're going to need to change that to alt on a PC. So just to recap, whenever you see command, you're going to want to change that to control. Whenever you see option, you're going to want to change that to alt. And once you get those two down, you're going to be all set, changing all of my Mac commands to a PC command if that's what you're using. So if we think about running our code, that'll be really the, the first thing that we'll need to do and one of the simplest shortcuts you'll ever learn. Uh, the only way that you do that is you write command enter. And as you'll see here, you could, if you wanted to, do all of the things that we're doing together manually. You could go to the top here for this running example specifically and just press run. We're gonna get an error that we're gonna handle in a second, but uh, even as you start to hover over it, you'll see that you have this command return prompt lit here, uh, showing that that's a shortcut to run this, which not a huge deal if you're running this every once in a while, you're clicking run. But the way that I like to think of these shortcuts is that every, um, every single activity that you need to do while you're coding is probably gonna be amplified a thousand times. Like you're not just going to run a code file once, you're probably going to run it many, many, many times throughout the day as a developer, at least I do personally. And so if you're going to be clicking every single time you need to run it, it's going to get cumbersome and annoying to click run every single time when you could just write command enter if you're on a PC, control enter. So I'm going to do that here, command enter to run this again. And so the first thing we'll notice is that we have this, um, this in or this error here that's saying that we have invalid syntax, it's because we just have this text in our Python file. Python doesn't really know what to do with this English text. And one thing that we could do, which you're familiar with as a developer, is that we could comment it out. And comments in Python are basically ways to leave notes in your code without having to actually have the code run that text as if it were code. And it, the way I would think about it is that your code's gonna run sequentially in Python. So it's gonna run line one, and then line two, and then line three. And what comments allow you to do is if you have a comment on line two, it's going to run line one, then go to line two and see, oh, wait, that's a comment. I shouldn't run that. I'm going to skip straight to line three. It just skips over all the text that you've indented out as a comment. And the way you can notify to your code that it's a comment is by having this hashtag in Python. You'll see that it already made my code turn from black, oops, this black text um, out to gray, which kind of signifies from Replit's world that this is not actually code. And now if I were to run this again, if I pressed command enter, then I would see that this runs cleanly. But just like we've seen that with running, you can use a command to make that go a little bit more quickly. You can do the same with commenting without having to just type out the hashtag. And the way you can comment or even uncomment code is that you can type command slash on a, on a Mac or control slash on a PC. So I can take this line here and I'm pressing command slash to toggle off the comment, command slash to toggle on the comment, and I could keep going all day. I could have fun with this little toggle party on my code, commenting it on or off. I'm gonna leave it uncommented. And now if I were to go and follow the prompt and print out hello world, I can print 
hello world, let's be excited about it at an exclamation point. And now if I were to run this again, I press command enter or control enter on a PC, you'll see that we get this output into the console, which is awesome. Um, we're gonna shift gears over to this shortcuts.txt file now that we've gotten through a couple of the more basic ones that I use. And we're gonna see that we have a whole list of to-do items that I have to do today to make my bed. I have to do a report for my team on the metaverse, which I know it's a tough life. It's really interesting and really cool. It involves reading an article, writing a report, emailing it out to the team. I have to schedule my physical therapy appointment for my ankle. I have to get a haircut. That's why I, I look so nice for you all. Uh, pick up some groceries to cook dinner. Need to film this video and send it over to YK for editing. And then I want to call my parents because I love my parents and I like talking to them every day. Um, but let's say that I, I set this the night before. I woke up this morning and there are a bunch of changes I need to make to my schedule. I need to uh, add this new podcast that I found with Matthew Ball to my metaverse report. Um, I need to prioritize my physical therapy appointment ahead of the metaverse report because physical therapy, really tough to book. Books up quickly, you gotta get on it. Um, I'm gonna remove the groceries task since I, I'm gonna end up door dashing dinner instead. And then I wanna take these spaces that are at the end couple of tasks and remove them. I wanna check off all the tasks at the end of the day once we're done. And then once we're done with that, let's go back to main.py and just print out good night instead of hello world, uh, just to signify that we're logging off. And we're gonna walk through how to do all these things manually, but more importantly, how to do them in a faster, more scalable way. Um, and we'll start with this first task, which is adding a new task item here to listen to this invest like the best podcast with Matthew Ball. And if I were to do this manually, I, I could just do it by going to the line before it, this article that I need to read with him, pressing enter, and then typing everything out. I can type out the square brackets, which open nicely and close nicely for me. I could add a space there and then say, listen to the invest like the best podcast with ooh, that typing today with Matthew Ball copy the link to it and paste it. Uh, that's a totally fine way to go. And it's honestly not that bad if you only have to do that one time. Again, there are faster and more scalable ways to do this. And I'm gonna teach you two ways to add new lines right here um, for this task. The first way that we can do it is we can add a blank line above the current line that we're in by pressing Command, Shift, Enter, which should be Control, Shift, Enter on a PC. And so if I go down to this Write Report line, all I have to do is type Command, Shift, Enter, which you'll see creates this new line above the line that I was just on. And I could keep going all day. I could keep adding more lines. I could have 20 at this point, but we don't need that many. We just need one. And all of a sudden I can now paste in or type in the new line that we need to create. That's one great way to do it. Another way that we can do this is we can duplicate content in a row. We can select the code that we wanna duplicate and then we can type shift option and up or down depending on which direction we wanna duplicate our code to um, in order to duplicate the code that was either directly above or below what we had. So let's say I wanted to just take this line here and duplicate it. I could duplicate it below the current line by typing shift option and down and now you'll see that I have this new line that was created and now we could go ahead just like we had before we could either copy and paste that line in we can type in the new information that we need either way we're, we're good to go we've created a new line and we have our new task in there um, one more thing that I'm just going to call out while we're here on this task is that indenting is something that I'm sure you found um, in your code whether you have a for loop uh, an if statement you have indented code, probably regardless of what you're coding. And in order to indent or unindent really easily, I use the command or control on a PC and square bracket um, to either indent with the right square bracket or unindent with the left square bracket. So for example, if I have this line here that's listen to the podcast, uh, if I were to press command and right square bracket, it would keep indenting it to the right. If I were to press command in the left square bracket, it would keep indenting it to the left. I could indent or unindent multiple lines. 
by highlighting all the lines that I want to indent or unindent and either do command uh, left square bracket to unindent or command square bracket or right square bracket to indent. Uh, it's just a really quick way if you want to highlight a bunch of code and indent it or unindent it, you could do it that way. Um, an alternate way of doing the same task is you can press tab and then to indent and shift tab to unindent. But either way, I'm just used to command and the left and right square brackets. So that is task one. That is getting that new episode of Invest Like the Best in there, adding it to our to-do list. Um, we are well on our way on to step two. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is we'd like to prioritize scheduling my physical therapy appointment ahead of the metaverse report. And again, if we were doing this manually, we could just take this line. I could press command X to cut it. I could go all the way up. I could add a new line. I could even add that new line by using the trick that we just learned, command shift enter, and then paste in what I just wanted to move. But uh, as with anything, there is a faster way to do this, or at least an, an alternate way to do this if you want to move code up and down, and that is to use option and the up or down arrow to move lines of code up or down. And so if I go back to our code, I can take this line that I want to move, don't even need to highlight it. I would only need to highlight it if I wanted to move multiple lines. And I just press option and up. And as you'll see, it just keeps climbing. I could keep going up and down, I could move it back and forth. I could reprioritize multiple lines of these, like I could call my parents and film the videos and shoot, send them over to YK. Uh, ahead of picking up groceries, it doesn't really matter, but option and up and down allow you to very easily move code up and down. So if you're coding something, you wanna move it around, um, option up and down I use all the time constantly to move code instead of copying and pasting uh, in different locations. And one more, so while we were just there, we, were, we need to remove this task uh, to pick up groceries since we're gonna door dash dinner. And so, Again, manually, what we could do is we could just go to this line to pick up groceries and I can press command delete to just delete that whole line. That's one way to just get rid of the whole line. Another way is if you were to go to this line and type command and shift and K, that would get rid of that line altogether. So I can go here, I can go to the pick up groceries for dinner line, press command shift K and all gone, just one saves you a step because instead of having a backspace and then backspace again, you can just do it all in one go. Um, and now what we can do next is we can remove these extra spaces in between getting a haircut and the square brackets, filming the shortcuts video and calling my parents. And I could do that by going to each line. I could highlight the cells I don't wanna use there. I can delete the spaces, go down, I can do it again. I can do it again, which isn't that bad if I only have three tasks I need to do this for. But the one way that I've found that is faster is instead if I could do this not just one row at a time, but I could do all three rows at the same time, that's even better. And one way that we can accomplish that is by creating multiple cursors. And what multiple cursors will allow us to do is to create a cursor on each line that we can then move over to the right, delete two spaces for, and then be done with it get three tasks done for the same time it takes us to do one. And the way that we could create multiple cursors we could, is we could use command, option, and the up or down arrow to create cursors in either direction. So if I were to go here, I wanna create two cursors below my current cursor. So I can do command, option, and down twice to create three cursors, which is pretty cool. So now you'll see that instead of one cursor moving around, I now have two, I have three. Um, with two additional cursors. And what I can do is instead of just going to the right one time, I can press shift and right to highlight those two cells, press delete, and then boom, I've now done all three lines in the same time it would take me to do one line. Um, and to just get out of it, all you have to do is press escape. So now all of a sudden we're good. We've gotten rid of those extra spaces, good to go. Um, and we are all set and on our way. Now the final thing that we need to do on this specific shortcut.txt files, I wanna check off that we did all the tasks. And I'm just gonna add an X to each of these different square brackets individually, which I can do. It's not that bad if I only have these tasks, but it's honestly a little bit easier if we were to just use a shortcut to do it for us. So 
we could think of a couple ways to do this. Um, one way that I'm going to personally advocate for is we can basically find a specific string that we want to replace and then figure out a way to replace it more quickly. So we could do control F and we could cop, we can type in the cells that we want to change. But if we just want to be selective about the ones that we want to change, we can highlight this text right here, this square uh, open bracket, this space and the square close bracket. And what you'll see is that the first one is highlighted in darker light blue and the subsequent ones are all in light, light blue. Um, and what we want to do next is we kind of want to just highlight all of these. We want to create a cursor, but not just create cursors down the line. We want to create a cursor every time we encounter that specific string sub segment. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to highlight the string that we want to copy, which we've already done. That's the opening square bracket space on the closing square bracket. And then we can just press command D to highlight every single time uh, that we'd like to of that string. So if I want to highlight the next string, I can get that by pressing command D. I can get the third one by pressing command D again, the fourth one by pressing command D again, the fifth one, sixth one, seventh one, eighth one, ninth one, tenth one, which now if you're following along with me, you should have these 10 cursors here, which if I were to go inside of the right square bracket, backspace and press X, then all of a sudden we've filled that out just even a little bit more quickly, uh, which is awesome. And now we just have one more thing we'd like to do. We'd like to go back to the main.py file to print out goodnight instead of hello world, which of course we could do by just clicking with our mouse, going back in here and typing goodnight. But I'm gonna teach you one other way to navigate between different code files by pressing a shortcut that is command P. And what you can do with command P is it'll bring up this prompt to allow you to find a specific file within your REPL environment. And so I could use my arrows to go up and down. I could even start typing MA and then enter to go directly to main. And now if I were to run this, I would see that we have goodnight instead of hello world. Um, I hope you found this helpful. These are the 10 shortcuts that I very transparently use the most. I use them every day when I code. Um, if I'm, you know, I'm obviously not using this for a text document, but if I'm moving code up and down, I use that all the time. If I'm creating additional lines, that happens all the time. If I want to change the name of a variable in my code, I can highlight every instance of it with command D, backspace, change it to whatever I want it to. I use these every single day and I'm excited to share them with you and hope that I'm helping you get a little bit further ahead on your coding journey than I was when I first started. Um, so with that, I'll bid you all a good night and excited to see you in the next video. Happy coding.